Joining us now to break down the latest developments regarding the U.S. tensions with Iran, we want to bring in Amber Athey, the White House correspondent for The Daily Caller. Amber, thank you very much for joining us tonight. So we're kind of in this cooling off period a little bit. I mean, just a couple days ago, it looked like war was imminent. It looked like things were going pretty bad regarding these tensions. But now things have cooled down a little bit. What has the White House said regarding the latest strike from Iran on U.S. troops in Iraq? The White House is really taking a time, as you said, to cool off right now. President Trump addressed the nation yesterday morning, and his line was that he is willing to have peace with any country who wants it. He's willing to renegotiate an international deal with Iran that pre prevents them from having a nuclear weapon. And his response at the current moment is to place economic sanctions on the country. So he's declining to escalate with military force, which is what people were expecting, and instead is is offering Iran a way out. He's letting them get the last word militarily to save face with their own people in the wake of the death of Soleimani, but refusing to uh, have the U.S. look like a patsy at the same time. And this was an issue, too, where conservatives were kind of split, actually. I mean, Democrats, of course, were basically in opposition. They can't give the president a win for almost anything. But they were also kind of saying that he didn't go through Congress, the proper avenues, in order to carry this out. But you also saw a conversation being had on the conservative side of this argument as well. Many were saying that this was the proper step to take, that it was time to buckle down on Iran. It was time for them to take action against this terrorist-led regime, basically. I mean, Soleimani was a designated terrorist. But then you also saw people such as Tucker Carlson, who was saying, that this isn't the type of fight that the U.S. should be getting involved in. And in fact, we've seen different reports coming from people like, I believe, BuzzFeed was the first report that the president was watching that episode of Tucker Carlson and kind of reevaluated his position regarding escalating tensions with Iran. So do we have any inference about what the White House wants to do next regarding this conflict? We don't know what next steps are, but it certainly does seem like the president has tried to hit that middle ground in the Republican Party right now. You have the neoconservatives who are calling for sending more troops to Iran and trying to escalate that conflict and potentially try to have a regime change there, uh, whereas you have the Tucker Carlson wing of the party, which is more isolationist and would prefer to avoid conflict altogether. The president, again, has taken that middle ground where he's opted to take out one of the uh, top leaders in that country that has been responsible for hundreds of American deaths, but has declined to send significant numbers of troops there or even to respond to those strikes on the U.S. bases with additional military force. And as we know, those strikes didn't result in any American casualties or any major damage to the U.S. bases in Iraq and around the region. So it looks like this was Iran trying to look good in front of their people and basically putting up a fireworks display to say that they did something in response to the death of Soleimani. And there have been differing reports as to whether or not that was Iran's intent or not. At first, it was said that they didn't want to actually strike any U.S. soldiers because they knew that the ramifications from that would be dire. But then you also hear then that maybe they just missed their targets. But I, either way, the U.S. did have some sort of notice beforehand. Troops were able to get out of harm's way. And as we know now, there were no casualties. So good news on that end as well. But regarding what comes next, too, a lot of people are saying that if this is all that comes from it, if it's an exchange of killing uh, Qasem Soleimani in exchange for that limited airstrike from Iran, the U.S. kind of got the better end of this exchange, and maybe there is no need to escalate any further. And you kind of see people in Congress now kind of hoping that that is the case. You see that a war powers resolution is being debated. Democrats, of course, are very much so on board with that. And you even see some, again, once uh, again, the kind of libertarian wing of the Republican Party saying that they support a war powers authorization. And then some of the president's more, I guess they would call themselves national security hawks, some would call them war hawks, whatever you want to call them, saying that that would just kind of handcuff the president in this effort. Is is the White House kind of taking a position regarding the war powers authorization? The White House is choosing instead to justify their own actions in killing Soleimani. As we know, the State Department has claimed that there was an imminent attack planned on U.S. bases and forces throughout Lebanon, Syria, and Iran. Uh, we don't have any evidence for that yet. Uh, Mike Lee was very vocal about the fact that he thought the briefing to uh, Congress people yesterday was actually more for children and about chiding lawmakers for questioning uh, U.S. intelligence officials on whether or not there was, in fact, an imminent attack. But at this point, it does seem like the U.S. has gotten the better side of this deal. They have managed to take out someone who has been on the U.S. intelligence community's radar for three administrations now with zero American casualties in return.
And I think it is worth pointing out, too, that individuals such as Senator Mike Lee, Senator Rand Paul, they are part of that isolationist part of the Republican Party. It's really not too much of a surprise to see them coming out and saying that they don't want this action taken at all. This is something that they routinely say about any intervention, for that matter. But this, So it shouldn't really necessarily be a surprise on this front, whereas Lindsey Graham, his critics would say that he is one of those more, uh, more likely to be involved in a conflict. He was a little bit more supportive of the 2003 invasion of Iraq. And so th there is a little bit something to be said regarding history, regarding this topic. But really quick before I let you go, too, what is Iran saying? Do they kind of seem content with the response that they've given already? Or do you think that this is something that they're going to continue to revisit going forward in the future? There have been unconfirmed reports that Iran is planning another attack on the the actual United States on U.S. soil, but we don't know if that's actually something that's in the works. I think what we're going to see next is the U.S. and Iran grappling over whether or not they want to revisit negotiations. Trump, of course, expressing a desire to renegotiate a deal that prevents them from having nuclear weapons, Iran would very much like to keep their nuclear capabilities. So that's where the next front is going to be, on diplomatic channels rather than military channels. Yeah, well, right now things do seem to be calm, so that's good news, I guess, on both fronts of this exchange. Amber Athey, thank you very much for joining us tonight.